Uh, salutations, my friends, and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe, in which we were playing at that beautiful Iberian Union last time. We went down the path towards mass liberalization, or maximum levels of it, in which we expanded the Opus Dei influence, and we've just finished fighting the storm, in which we got Iberian Economic Miracle, more annual GDP growth factor, miscellaneous cost plus 10, and then miscellaneous income plus 20, and then income rate plus 10%, so that's going to be very, very nice. Now, we don't have another focus tree yet, but that's okay, and I asked you guys yesterday, what should we call our intelligence agency name? You guys give me some good names, but I went with a person's choice of... Uh, oh, it's not here. Well, uh, let's see. Let's go with Control V. So, Central Superior de Information de la Defense. Okay, sounds pretty good to me. Uh, there's other names, but I think this one just, I think, I don't know, just fit in the best, in my best mindset, I don't know. I just chose that one just because. Right now, we have cryptology going along. Uh, we're trying to do the German Reich, just in case, the French state, Ordenstadt, Burgundy. You know, the, the ones that we kind of are relatively worried about. Regardless, like I said earlier, we're still out of manpower, getting a lot of political power, though. Black market arms trade decreases, though. It's been brought to our attention that the domestic black market activity has increased. The criminal syndicates in charge will siphon increasing amounts from our armament production, redirecting it towards the black market. However, we should we need it, the presence of the black market also gives us the option of quickly building our stockpile of weapons, which is a very good thing. And also, because we just finished that last focus, we now have 11.7 annual GDP growth versus 3.4% for annual debt interest. So... Not bad, as long as the economy keeps growing, that's great. Our annual deficit is still over a billion dollars a year, which is really not good. I mean, we've already started, I've already slashed, or we've already slashed, the civilian spending as well as military spending, so, hey, we got 30 more guys. Not bad, not bad. And, are they going to be gone? No, oh, we lost 20 more. We got 10, though. We got a whole 10 guys and then manpower reserve. And that's mostly because we've been trying to expand our divisions. The Volgastadt. Oh, boy. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not good. Salazar. No, no. You're not allowed to do that. Nope. Come back. Today, the housekeeping staff of Sal Benta Palace was horrified to find the corpse of Antonio Salazar in the bath. In his bath. The body was quickly removed from an autopsy and bureau, but the knowledge of his death managed to quickly escape the circle of secrecy that was intended to remain in until the gov Iberian government can come up with an official story. And already, numerous underground forces within the Union are mobilizing, worrying rumors of sedition within the Portuguese state have come to our attention. With keeping the beloved Caudillo's death a secret no being no longer an option, Iberian authorities must put all the resources in play in order to keep that union stable. Already, tanks have been spotted moving down roads in Lisbon, and martial law has been declared in several regions of Portugal. Caudillo Franco and Salazar's designated successor, Marcelo. Jose da Nevas Alves Caetano has already condemned any forces conspiring to take advantage of Salazar's death, but it does not appear that this will provide a conclusive end to the political chaos in Portugal. It appears that the only thing left to do is to crack down as hard as possible and divert every possible resource to ensuring the Union stays together. Move, oh my goodness, move on to secure Portugal now? Holy cow. Well, I was not ready for this. I kind of wondered what was going to be the next part of the focus tree. But, okay, wow, so we lose stability, political power, due to Salazar's weak influence, Iberia's stability will slightly worsen. Iberia's in a dire situation, so it may be time to finally split the Union. Oh, no, 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 no. Spain and Portugal, though, have no content in this release. Ooh, that is not good. Replace Salazar with Iberian Council. Get more political power, stability. Ooh, no, 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 no. No, this is not good. We're, we're still unstable, but the death of Salazar... Uh, ruler of Portugal, economist, and military man has died. His death signifies the ever-changing times Iberia finds itself in. It serves as a reminder of our own mortality that a figure such as Salazar must also answer to the call of death. He will be remembered as a brave man who staved off the communist threat and who helped guide Iberia down some troubling times. He may, he may never be forgotten. But well, enough with all that. We've got to make sure Salazar's death doesn't cause any undue instability. If his passing means needless hassle for us here in the living, his memory might get slightly sullied. Given, give the man his extravagant parade and then finally ensure that all goes as smooth as a transition. It will be necessary to give the man his due, if not for anything but to keep up appearances for the Iberian public. Oh man, that is that is not good. Oh, we have to go Salazar. Oh boy. Uh, we can't do anything there. But at least last time we did get rid of the terrorists, which is nice. Which is actually really good. Oh, okay. So that's a terrorist thing. Uh... Who is this? Oh boy. Yves declares independence. The loss of Caudillo Salazar is a tragedy. We will miss his steadfast, protective nature of his people, I'm sure. However, his death is exactly what I've seen to fit fit to prepare. And so this message to you, I have strong reason to believe that you, that, or believe that, with the death of one of the Caudillos, Abril will shortly collapse. I have no means 
I am by no means wishing for this to happen, though the possibility of its occurrence is one I cannot deny. Were the Union to collapse, it would signal to the Italians and others that I am vulnerable, and without your protection, the state would surely wither away. Because of this, this letter has been prepared to notify you that our diplomatic relationship is henceforth null and void. In order to prevent an er abrupt cessation of relations, we will instead terminate them now in a prepared manner. Algeria will fall under the sovereign leadership of Yevs Godard. All Algerian territories under Iberian occupation will be seized and reincorporated into the Algerian state. All diplomatic ties with Iberia are firmly severed. Uh... Okay, then, wait, can I modify the government? Oh, I can change the head of state. Well, I can't, well, we can't really do that. Um, dissolve the, I, no, there's no content on this divorce tree. No, 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 I will fight every single one of these pieces of crap to the very end. We will save this union, by God, we will save it. And I want to go, can we go back to war with these guys? You piece of garbage, you bunch of god dang fascists, gonna have to burn. Portuguese retornados. I love the Portuguese people and the legions over there, but... Mm, how dare you. Also, we've already built up two nuclear reactors, which is kind of nice. Military austerity. Yeah, I don't know, man. It doesn't help us that much, but just keep doing it for funsies. Yeah, I really want to get that guy there, but... Mm, yeah, evil. I don't want my GDP to increase too much, but we're, we're, good on, we're good on tanks. Look at that. We're good on APCs. We're good on tanks. Not bad. Ooh, are we getting more army XP? Yes, we are, because we're training. Uh, I could make this six armored battalions. That's not bad. 42.5 organizations, not bad. You actually get more HP. You get a little bit more armor as well, so I, that's not too bad, in my opinion. You know what? If you have main battle tanks... What happens if you throw on main battle tank recon? You get a little bit less piercing. It's going to cost even more. Do it. Let's do it. That sounds like fun. Now, these tanks... No, they're not perfect. They're only 20 combat width, but they should be pretty darn good. Now we're, out of, we're actually just straight up out of tanks now. Oh, oh now we're trying to do that. The death of Salazar. So here's an important thing to know. Oh, uh, well, we got some intelligence we could do. Let's go ahead and grab whatever we need. It's hard to read, like, which one you're... Uh, I guess it's not too hard to read which one you've done a little bit. But now we've got to choose Alon Caudillo. Salazar's popularity upon his death. Uh, Franco's decision to become Iberia Sol Caudillo will greatly weaken reformism. Well, we really can't go that way if we want to reform. Improve Iberia's stability would be good. What we're we going to do with the worthy successor? It's only fair, right, and proper that the highest being in Iberian polit political society be given the important responsibility of choosing a new successor. And how thankful we that are we that this is being done than Franco himself? The Portuguese people shall ever be so grateful that a man such as Franco is picking their new representative. There may be a few concerns that Spain's own Franco is to pick the successor rather than some shambled together committee of various bureaucrats from Portugal, but there shouldn't be any reason to fear. This is a union of equals, and Franco knows this all too well. He has Portugal's best interest at heart, and much more so than any pencil pusher. Rest assured, a worthy successor shall be chosen. I hope to God we can go back and just crush Algeria. How dare you do that to us? You completely abandon us after everything we've done for you? Completely abandon us. How dare you? Absolutely dare you. We're gonna do, we gotta get through some other comments as well. Oh, I can build some radar over there, that'd be pretty good. Build some radar down here as well. Build it in Africa, even though it probably won't even matter. Uh, well, we, we have extremely long range. Do that, too. You know what? We're taking a little break from building all the normal stuff we build. Except for this, of course. But, yeah. A couple other comments. Uh, someone wants me to go to, with Italy, go to war with Italy, Turkey, Germany. Well, unfortunately, in TNO, the new order, the last days of Europe, manually justifying is not enabled. You can't do that. So, you're kind of limited by your focus tree, by who you can go to war with, and decisions. So... Uh, oh, they've defeated the Moscow autonomy. Nice. Muscovine's coming back. That's actually really cool. Wow, they are storming into Volgastadt. But, uh, yeah. Can't manage to go to war. Someone else wants, wants me to go to war with Andorra. I totally want to. Because I don't think they should really exist over there, to be honest with you. But I can't really do much about it. Go figure. Well, there goes the Volgastadt. And we have a worthy successor, provisional commissary of Western Russia. We have Western or West Siberian Republic. The Grand Principality of Central Siberia. And Cheetah formed the East... Far Eastern Imperial Realm. Mikhail versus Rurik. He looks like an ogre. Uh, versus... Well, uh, okay, Boris. Hello. I was not expecting to see Boris here. <laughs> wow. Okay, Yeltsin. Okay, then. All right. Well, whatever. And let Mikhail Oktan. Cool. All right. So, here's the thing we got to do. We can choose Ketano, which was, I think, the direct successor. Or we can choose go with Da Mota Vega. So, we go with this guy. He does what? It's a strength and reformism in the council. Or we could have chosen the da, da Mota Vaga. Viaga. Uh, let's see. And this will weaken 
performance and we don't want to do that so we're going to choose Caetano. One candidate for the new Caudillo is one Marcelo Caetano. A career politician who has long since held various forms of power under Salazar, already seen by the Iberian political society as a mild reformer. This may raise a few eyebrows among some hardliners. After all, a reformer is a reformer, but this has been offset by his service to Iberia. He appears to be truly believe in Iberian wishes for nothing more than its longevity and success. We will likely know what to expect of him in this respect and may be able to outflank him if need be. He seems to be a safe choice, first and foremost, or at least that's how he appears for the moment. It will always be important for us to remain vigilant in today's times. A worthy successor to be torn on such a decision would be suited. The, would have suited the aging Spanish Cadillo perfectly before his rival or Iberian dominance had died. Now, standing uncertain, uncertainly alone atop a house of crumbling cards, he wished the former technocrat was beside him. He always had a clever comment ready for a situation like this. Franco could almost hear the faint whisper of his voice, yet he was alone, sitting in a large conference room surrounded by empty-faced bureaucrats and lackeys who could not rely on for critique or sound advice. What did they know of the severe strain put upon the Union by this precarious situation? What did they know of the Portuguese people's mournful cries and significancies held for the futures of the nation? It was on him now to hold our beard together in the face of an ugly and unrelenting world, hopefully alongside him, someone to bring the joys and rigor of ruling back to the old man's heart. Brief me again on the two candidates. The almost hushed murmur made many, even those who sat close to the usually imposing military man, leaned in to listen intently. A short pause followed as the room was unsure of who would speak first. Seeing the dejection and quiet withdrawal of the man at the head of the table, the discussion was promptly started. Nonetheless, a decision has to be made. Oh, we have no manpower. That's not good. I, I, I can't get over this. How, how dare you? Like, how much manpower? How strong are they? I want to. I hope there's a way we can go to war. They only have five factories, and they say they don't want to be under pro our protection. Like, like, yeah, maybe there might be a little bit of unrest here, but. Oh, conservative victory in Canada. Everyone's against him, but the people. Okay, uh, but yeah, three to five divisions. Do you even have an air force? You don't even have an air force or navy, probably. So I don't know, man. That might have been a dumb, dumb thing to do. I get that they want to protect themselves, and they want to protect themselves against Italy too. But with your current military strength, you just—it would have been better just to like say, you know what? We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, civilian. No, I'd love to continue doing civilian stuff, but we just can't afford it right now. That's too much money. That's looking better. 1.01. 1. 0. 1. 0. 4. Cool. Unity pact is looking strong. Oh, and I guess... Oh, England. Well, the kingdom of England and Wales and Cornwall and all them. Uh, kingdom of England and Wales. Join the OFN. That's interesting. Hopefully Italy does the same thing. That'd be really good. That'd actually be very good, even though Bulgaria is still in the unity pact. But we've chosen our successor, out with the old dome. So that's it, goodbye and good luck. The soon-to-be former Yes Man of Salazar will say to Franco as he announces their timely replacement, I don't recall saying good luck. Franco will apply with a ruthless callousness. Salazar's time is over and thus so is the time of his lackeys. Great changes are beginning to occur in Iberia and these new times we find ourselves in do not need useless careerists such as these flunkies. Franco has a grasp on a great political broom with which he is sweeping up any incompetence from the old stooges of Salazar. The next phase of the political process does not need these men, nor does it particularly want them. We're sure we'll get by just fine after replacing them with men of a finer political standing. We lose political power and stability. So be it. The pragmatist, the quiet day, marked the welcome change to the feverish events that had plagued the last few days since Salazar's death. Set alone in his spacious office, Franco silently contemplated his choice for the successor to Salazar. Not been easy. The pragmatic uh, Portuguese has already been a has always been a hushed voice of reason that he could rely on, even if he despised it, he would miss it. His senior staff had been excited at the opportunity to now further centralize the regime, ensuring maximum control of a population he might need ready for war or worse. Yet Franco knew he needed more than a figurehead to keep Portugal loyal within the Union. His final choice had been the scholarly Marcelo Catano, a protege of Salazar who had already lived a long life inside the world of politics. His moderate former stance may be an issue that could offset the stability he brought from securing Portugal, as hardliners may seem as a step too far in the wrong direction. It would be a difficult matter even for his eventual successor to contend with. He sighed, though. This was not a world that readily embraced the language of hope anymore. Hopefully, a wise choice. And it gives us more political power, which is... Not great. Actually, who's leading Germany? And black, ar black arms trade increases. Okay, so we get uh, Borman, of course. No focus, and then black... Oh, they got severe, huh? And probably these guys are going to get walloped pretty harshly. Well, it looks like the Reich's Commissariat are coming back together. That's kind of cool. Can we can't fight that yet. How do we get more stability? Ooh, how do we get more stability? We have got a lot of poverty. It's not good. Oh, my goodness. This is so sad. Katharina Stadt. That's kind of cool. Keep building radar. We want to know as much intelligence as possible. Just for funsies. And the peace conference. Baku. Well... They didn't live for that long. Metal Regelrun Caucasin. Uh, yes, like I said earlier, someone wants me to attack Andorra. Another comment from the last video was for me to play as Brittany, which is actually kind of interesting because they do have a unique focus tree. 
They are national socialists. Wow, they are interesting to say the least. Maybe we'll, we will play them sometime. I'm not sure when. Maybe, maybe next. Maybe not. Maybe I don't know. Uh, let's do. Uh, let's do this one because we can. Uh, I will say this though. So politically connected. Uh, whatever your names. Ah, what happened to you? Unnamed. Who are you? Anyways, uh, there's so many people in so many different countries in Russia that I want to at least get through a lot of them. Like. Every other campaign will be like Russia, just because there's so many, so much flavor there. I love it so much. The grand inauguration, the momentous day, as this requires a lot of preparation. It is the first time in the Iberian Union's history that we've had, we've had a transitional period from Cadillo to Cadillo. The people will need to be aware of the importance of this occasion, so a rather grand ceremony is bound to take place. The public can expect to see all the regular displays of Iberian prowess unveiled for the entire nation to bear witness to and hold dearly in their minds. It shan't be a day that is forgotten about for quite some time. An illustrious affair is deeply needed, even if it's just to hammer home the greatness of the landmark decision. It is surely to be quite the spectacle, which should hopefully settle the new Caduio right in its place. Side by side with, frankly, we get political power, stability, and final preparations. Oh, man. Uh, so, did we see what was in the autopsy for Salazar? I don't think we did. A great conspiracy. Oh. Nanjing Line General Sun Dian Ying. Great conspiracy. Oh, boy. Perhaps it might be true. Dai Lai. Dai Li situation. God, I want to play as China so badly, but I want to wait until they have a massive war in, in that. Oh. Slave of the Samurai. That's so unfortunate. Two billion dollars in civilian expenses every year. Oh, my goodness. And we're trying to get some carriers. That'd be kind of cool. Better carriers, actually. Because we got pretty good destroyers, but we still need to actually you know, make them. Because we're still making some old stuff. Frigates, subs, carrier ones. Cannot deploy because we have no manpower. It's god awful, I know. It's terrible. I'm joining with my cat Binky on my chair, who is. Loving, loving the isolation, or at least the silence, not isolation, but he loves the silence that he has. And we have an event, Final Preparations. An event so momentous, oh, momentous and grandiose it can only be compared to the pompous crowning of the past absolute autocrats. Yet this is not some medieval ceremony of authority, but a modern legitimate legitimation of a regime so wet behind the ears that it has not even raised a single generation successfully. Wow, that is, a, that is a weird comparison. But anyways, no one knew the importance of the appearance of the longevity and peace as much as the Spanish Cadullo, who had taken the surprising liberty of inspecting the construction of Lisbon himself. He counted the diverse forms symbolism he had ordered to be quietly included on the various stages and locations where the rule of the regime he had helped build could finally be stabilized. Pillars of society like the church cannot be forgotten in historic events such as this. Observing the hurried tussle of the many workers conscripted from all over the Union, he allowed himself a small smile of relief. Soon he would be at the end of the road, he now just wished that his rival could soon be beside him in this glorious moment. The Union consolidating? Well, we'll see about that. 1.07. So be it. Not bad. And, okay. Wow, this is increasing by quite a bit. Holy crud. Substantial? Oh, I don't like this. Less uh, arms out, but I really don't like that. That's looking not too bad. The chosen successor. The former approached the uh, lavish podium flanked by a seething mass of cheers and jubilation. His eyes, however, remained steady and pointed, pointed forwards, examining the deceptive serenity in the face of the man who would soon run a nation of na union of nations with. Hands reached out to grasp hold of him, as others were swatted away by the countless security personnel which guarded the extended walkway. Admiring the effort of the Spanish Cadillo and quickly preparing such a sub sumptuous uh, courtiership of the Portuguese capital he climbed the hastily erected marble stairs to stand beside the aging former general not exchanging a single word with Caetano Franco stepped forward to the microphone his speech a strange mix of honorable members from Salazar and a desperate call for unity managed to arouse some excitement amongst the masses of lesbians gathered Caetano noted the slightest hint of, sat of a satisfied smile on the old man's face upon his retreat to the back of the stage now it was his own turn to step forward he braced physically against intense din as he quickly shuffled the notes for his speech words of reform moderation and ease of tensions on the, the half peninsula were almost lost in the raucous applause that followed. Did he detect a hint of jealousy in Franco's eyes when they left the stage together? No matter, he had done his part, and he had done it well. Forwards into new, new era of stability. Or, well, new stability for Iberia. Yep, stability, political power, and change his national focus. The new Caduio. Oh, man, I don't know what's going to happen next. Oh, hello. That's first day. Caetano soon begins first day as Portugal's new Caduio. It would be more than likely to be mostly a formal fair, greeting his new staff and winning hearts and minds, but it would be something... Could, Katana will need to get used to. We're sure he'll excel in the role and will be a good get a good feel of what, what needs to be done in his new office. It's his first day, so likely we won't see, be seeing any dramatic moves, but an eye but an eye is still the best to keep on the new Caduyo. Vigilance is key in these difficult times. We can't rest easy for no one these days. It's for the best, though, that Katano feels warm and welcome in his job. We'll make sure he becomes a fine Caduyo for Iberia. You know what? I, I wanna say uh, besides getting more intelligence stuff done, that even though we don't know that what happened to Salazar, like is it just natural causes? Did it seems like a conspiracy theory at this point that Burgundy caused the death of Salazar. Like, maybe Salazar was pr probably pretty old, but 
I don't know. Just because Burgundy has a lot of potential for events, I have a good feeling that, you know, maybe they did something, maybe they don't. It feels like a conspiracy to blame everything on Burgundy. They don't They don't control everything. But they can control a lot. Oh, hey! England and Wales, yeah. Ah, oh, I love it. Let's go back to the medieval ages. And it's first day. Making new appointments. Salazar's former yes man will be likely in for surprise when they hear of Catano's plans to rejuvenate his office with his own men. Catano clearly has no need nor use for the bureaucratic vestiges of a dead man. Instead, he looks to the future, his future more precisely with his own people. All will know that Catano is not just some carbon copy replacement Salazar. He is his own man with his own ambitions. These ambitions, though, will hopefully be delivered within the new influx of new staff. Iberian political life will no doubt be impacted by the latest changes as they are as the era of Salazar slowly fades away from memory and his first day. Following the grand inauguration, Catano quickly developed or delved into administrative work, attempting to gain an even clearer picture of the situation Iberia was finding itself in. Goodbye, military spending. Knowing of the problems facing the regional representations, he recognized his own important role, not just as a competent replacement for Salazar, but also being a figurehead of Portuguese interests within the Union. He was able to integrate, ingratiate himself effectively with the members of both the Legislative and Advisory Council. Catano figured that despite their seeming lack of power in opposing Cadillo decision-making, that they were still extremely important in the process of smooth governance. If an issue were to divide the two dictators, it also may help gain the support to overwhelm Franco's arguments. The first day was over, a flurry of meetings and paperwork to establish his authority behind the closed doors of government in the same way his inauguration had cemented his standing on the international stage through foreign press coverage. A small rest in his new office finally allowed him to clear his mind slightly. He looked out at the grand windows on a bustling Madrid, still heaving with activity despite the late hour. Pleased that he could now begin to shape the direction the Union would take in the future, he smiled happily. Important work had to be done, and was prepared for it. A bright future ahead. Alright, we have so much black arms trading here, it's not even funny. We get more attention and growth, but is that worth it? Is that really worth it? And here, let's see. Do we have maintenance companies? We, need, we should get some maintenance companies for these guys. That'd be pretty good. We could make these 40 combat with, but I think 20 combat with is good enough for now. And actually, let's go do that. There we go. I don't know if we'll actually be able to go to war again. Hopefully, we will. I really have no idea, though. I really hope we can, though. We could put main battle tanks, but tanks are pretty expensive to make. At this point, why don't you just throw an APC recon as well? You might as well, since we have recon, motorized, Serbia sides with Germany, IFE recon, main battle tank. Uh, I don't think, do we even have motorized? I think we stopped producing that, didn't we? Yeah, we stopped producing that, so we'll just go probably with the regular recon. You still get two? Which is the same as IFV? No? Hold on. IFV recon doesn't have recon. Maybe it's just because we haven't researched it, but that's quite peculiar, I'd say. Whatever, no matter. We'll get enough of that. There you go. Cool. And a tour by Birio. A uh, Cadillo should know his people. A new one especially. He will need to grasp the people's needs and demands as he rules over them with great oversight. In order to satisfy this particular need of the new office, Catano shall go on to, on a grand tour of Iberia to meet the masses face to face. Some in Iberian political society have turned their noses up at the idea of seeing, seeing it as a stinking of Cadillo. Caetano's alleged reformist mindset, but many more see it as a welcoming take on the role of Cadillo. It will certainly cause a bit of stern, shall show off the Cadillo role for the public to gawk at face to face. Hopefully, some of some form of rejuvenation through being in the public light shall come from all this preparation. That would be very, very good. Uh, not bad. Still trying to make these radar stations, which is fine with me, because I love radar. And with all this information going on, we get to know exactly what might be coming our way. We've got radar over here. Uh, well, eventually. Oh, we have it down here. Uh, in North Africa. That's good. Level 2. Let's see where else do we got it. Um, I thought I put it over on the islands, but I don't really see it. Maybe it's not being made yet. Maybe not. Yeah, Barcelona, Algarve, whatever, however you pronounce it. And Madeira. Oh, we could probably do... Oh, that's nice. Now that is nice. This is, why, this is exactly why I build radar, so we can see what's coming in. And gives our guys some bonus. For the good of the Union. All can rest easy in the safe and sound knowledge that Catano was almost certainly the right pick for the role of Cadillo. He has, thus far, graced the office with his professionalism, and has reinvigorated it with a welcoming freshness. Kicking out Salazar's cronies and the various other students and lackeys that made up the crux of the office, and going on a grand tour of Iberia certainly put Catano in her good books. The Union looks to be strong, sturdy, and stable with Franco and Catano ruling over the nation as dual Caudillos. It's a welcoming sight to see the maintaining of the Union's stability with its choice of Caudillo now seemingly entrenched. For the greater good of Iberia, Catano will hopefully prove himself to be more than a capable Caudillo. Touring a beer now. Population centers all over half of the peninsula were surprised by the d mysterious disturbance of Albert Speer. Where did Speer go? Anyways. Surprised by the unannounced visits of the new Portuguese Cadillo, Caetano, as he was making his way around his realm. Only briefly notifying his Spanish counterpart, Caetano, shortly after establishing the bureaucratic framework for his administration, he set out to tour Iberia. 
It was necessary to gain a more complete picture of average life and to assess the extent of the divisions were politically unstable for the nation. One of the steps he made was in the border city of Badajoz, situated on the left bank of the Guadiana River and extremely close to the unofficial Portuguese border. Catano's market drove through the city, making a stop at the Bullring, a site where, the, according to the regime, dissidents at the Spanish nationals had murdered hundreds of Republicans. Choosing only to take a small security detail, Catana then made his way around to the streets on foot. He was recognized very quickly and his crowds began to form, following his walk and cheering him. Once he was at the town hall, he requested for a desk to be brought out, which he sat at, or sat behind. Motioning for the onlookers to come forward, he instructed his security detail to, look up, to pick out a number of individuals to line up in front of his new desk. He then began to question each of them in a friendly manner, taking the time to get to know each of the ones he picked. Listening to the concerns, he made a few notes and asked for the political opinions of the, on the regime. As none would answer openly, he again wrote down a few notes and then made his way back to the bullring. Newspapers around the country began to follow his journey, documenting each visit and guessing where he would turn up next. Dubbing the event Catano's Kati Grand Tour, it quickly went down into Iberian's Iberian consciousness. Or conscious. A commendable effort. More stability? Ah, yeah, maybe we can get rid of black market trade. 16 billion. Oh, no, no, no. 1.1 billion. So be it. So be it. Keep building stuff up. Looking real nice. Love it. I wish we could get more manpower. I really wish. Is, are there any wars going on? I wonder what happened to Speer. The world is not at peace. Oh, yeah. England and Scotland. 10,000. Oh, my gosh, England. Holy crap. Four, almost 50,000 losses? Jesus. For the good of the Union, my friends. For the good of the Union. Oh, boy. Scotland might just do stuff there. So. Oh, good. It feels almost like continuity. That was the beauty of effective reform. In the critical eye of the public, Cadillo Catano had already taken great efforts to ease his transition into power without hitches. His numerous visits and attempts to understand the mood and problems of localities around the Union had given him impetus to carry forth his, his ideas and display them proudly to the various councils and to the Spanish counterpart. It was not... It was not his will he was representing, but that of the Iberian people. Not only had he effectively positioned himself in his new role, so the general populace supported him, but he also had managed to staff and administration well. This has given him the support of many in the civil service. He now stood at the pinnacle, admired by many and without the ruinous taint of scandal. Catano was positioned to be a unifying, stabilizing figure in Iberian politics. His reluctance to immense himself in the cheap power pol politicking that Salazar and Franco had been engaged in was refreshing to those in higher office. Seeing a change from trying to gain relative to gain relative gains over another and to working for the absolute gain of the Union made Caetano one of the first true Iberians. Not a Portuguese nationalist, but a product of the ongoing integration between the two historic nations. Under his rule, the future began to look a little brighter, a different kind of hand at helm. We get political power, which we probably don't need. Considerably improve Iberia's stability. Yes, we're still unstable. Yeah, depth charge is cool. We're still unstable. Big sadness. It is 1968, so we're, we are closely approaching the 70s, and I think it is time. We've got carriers, we got these destroyers. We're going to freeze. We're going to make destroyers up. Let's see if we can make any better armor. Uh, yeah, it, these, old, these things are just too old, in my opinion. Frigates. Oh, wait, we're making frigates. Oh, frigatey frack. Uh, early carrier convoys would be nice. Earlier carrier hull. Goodbye. Basic. Basic. We're still researching that early carrier, so we can get rid of this one. Even though we'll probably not, not even use the Navy ever. Tax up two. Um, destroyer three, Corvette frigate. You got a bigger number there, so I'm going to assume you're a screen, so. What do you have over here? Light battery three. Anti air four is always good, like you have already. Better, do we have a better radar in it yet? No, that's okay, though. Level three engine. Better torpedoes, not really, that's okay. Rapid fire guns. Get slightly better guns. Uh, what is this? Anti submarine warfare for frigates? Uh, I don't mind that. And that's why I went with more depth charges. I actually well, researched depth charges a little bit more off screen. So we got that. That's good. Uh, what is this? That is. I love, I love, I love modules. Anti air. That's not bad. I kind of like ant a lot of anti air. I actually. I think that's pretty good. We got some. That's actually not bad. So instead of this, this is what we want. This is going to be a really, really nice screen if we ever are able to make it. Huh. <laughs> Cool. I don't know, frigates are starting to grow on me a little bit. Oh, civilian austerity? Yeah, I don't think so. Cool. We're doing really well with cryptology. We could use it on other people. 4% done for Burgundy. 19% done for the French state. That's not bad. And we are 19% done for the German... Wow, okay. Yeah, it makes sense because Burgundy really has... It's really hard to decrypt. Actually, that's really cool. Look at that. It, it, it has a little wavy line there. That tells you that you're doing stuff to one. So, I guess now... Hold on. We're reformists. 61 out of 109. Iberian Council convenes. 
created almost seven years ago as a legislative body to help the Cadillas rule the nation and liberalize the regime a little bit. The Iberian Council has served through all the important events in our recent history, the Battle of Barcelona, the economic restructuring of the country, and the death of Salazar. As powers were left vague to avoid protests from the various groups that formed the government, but, but it seems clear that the role of the Council must be clarified as such. An extraordinary meeting has been called. All the council members, the ministers, and the Cadillos will attend it, and the meeting with them will keep going until a final decision on what exactly the role of the council has reached. Let the meeting begin. Oh, crap. That does not sound good. But we'll do it. The State of the Union. The fall of the Troy has put things into perspective. It may be that this union, while once necessary action stop the marching Huns, needs a large-scale reformation to save itself from being thrown into the dustbin of history. We are to call out far and wide, across the nation and across the spectrum, to decide what the future will hold for Iberia. Whether we are increasingly reform ourselves or just keep the status quo remains to be seen. What is needed, however, is a discussion to decide how to best proceed and avoid certain doom. And get political power. Thank you for auto-doing that. So, call for grievances. The call went up far and wide, and some didn't even believe it was going to be genuine at first, and yet it was such. The towering leadership of the Iberian Union has sent out a message across the political spectrum seeking dialogue on how to best address the issues facing the nation. And maybe that some of the, them have had something useful to say and can bring something new to the table that will see our to our survival rather than our destruction. Others may have thought it, may, it would be a lost cause, to whom we will pay no real notice to. Whatever our decision may be, we shall hear them out and decide what is best for the future of Iberia. Stability and regulated public meetings. More daily political power? Wow, public meetings? What are those? We don't need those. What? Public meetings? Ah, I don't know about that. Okay, so what's down here? Let's people found a debate. Call forth the Congress. Considerably improve Iberia's stability. No need for haste. Choose carefully. The old guard hangs on. Grasp the reins, distribute excess, balance the council, swearing loyalty, alter succession laws, s slow burn liberalization, let them in. Mm. Well, the conservatives. Oh, who, who do we invite? Oh, crap. Separatists? I don't think I want to invite the separatists. No, I don't want... Uh, do, do we want to do that? I don't know. Let's do the technical cuts first. It's only five days. An unusual allies emerged during our recent undertaking of talks and reforms. The Franco-appointed technocrats have appointed out their interest in the Refor Reformation progress and wish to help us through guidance and advice. Certain figures like that wish to partake in a larger undertaking of the promises are from the Opus Dei, an institution of the Catholic Church in, with an interest in liberal economics. No doubt old guard adherents of the autarchy will be suspicious of their involvement in the process. Whether these technocratic individuals can be trusted or not remains to be seen. Um, final debate. What about this path? Call forth the Congress. Handle Caetano. Dismiss the remnant. Oh, that might be good. Prepare the administrators. Limited sacrifices. Worse instability. The council is unchained. Rotate the generals. Speak to the governors. Tighten the window. Oh, man. A true new state. Oh, man. I have a good feeling we have to go. This seems really cool, though. The let them in path. Oh, man. I can't wait for this... Iberia, the Iberian Union, to get another update so like all its paths, all its potential paths are available, but the separatists. The history of Iberia has been a history filled with instances and notions of separatism. Basque, Catalans, Galicians, and others have demanded autonomy and nationhood for years and years. These requests were ultimately stamped out through tried and tested means of reactionary force, but now perhaps at the time is, it is time to seek dialogue. A lot of blood has been spilled in the name of the regional question, and many are wondering about the future of Iberia. It may be time to talk about the separatist organizations. Well, maybe. Technocrats appeal to the Congress. With the process ch chugging, chugging along, the Technocrats aligned with the Opus Dei organization has sent out a plea wishing for the furthering of their involvement in the process. Believing that the process apparently needs a qualified voice to speak on certain matters, they sent in a number of proposals that they seek to bring to the table. One such proposal are particularly, they're particularly pushing for is an improvement in civil li liberties for Iberians. On the outset, these proposals seem all well and good, but God knows what these people are truly after. One thing this process cannot allow is for the fifth column to arise once again. It occurred once before, it took the strength of an entire nation and the sea of blood to stop the fifth column antagonist. That being said, it could be worth placating these people if we are to embark on real reform in Iberia. These technocrats could certainly prove to be a key part of that process if we were to take them and the proposal proposals on board. Needs their input. Ooh. I, honestly, I think we should get them in, because we've already tried to liberalize as much as possible now. There's, they need their, we need their input. So, actually, does this have any limiters? The final debate is over. Strongly reformist, reformist, neutral... Okay, so that, these are the conditions we need to get this path. No need for haste. Strongly conservative. Conservative neutral. Okay, so I we get to choose who we invite to the council. So thank you to the people who let me know about this earlier on. So I kind of had an idea what was going to happen. So I really... I, that's why I like reading your comments. Like, you guys sometimes give me insight of what could potentially happen. Especially in a narrative-driven mod like TNO. 
uh, technocrats triumph. So, with Opus Dei's involvement in the process, the dynamics of a beer and political society has truly changed. Since your economic liberalism has seemingly been given all clear, now the floodgates are open for the rest of Opus Dei's proposals. The decision to take in Opus Dei and their op opinions have caused no shortage of hoo-ha among the more conservative sections of a beer and political society. The miss matters little, though, for the process requires the means of all qualified voices in Iberia. The Opus Dei are to be welcomed on board and bring a hopefully healthy element to the Congress. The Opus Dei have, of course, been nothing but grateful of the opportunity provided to them by the Iberian government. This gratefulness has been showcased by the entrenchment of support for not only the process, but also the government as well. The technocrats will certainly have to improve their usefulness as the Congress will soon evolve into the most crucial stages. In any case, it is hoped that the technocratic expressors will bring something new and fresh to the table. The first thinking of technocracy shall bring Iberia back from the brink. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, you know. 48% stability, not bad. Despotism is slowly going down, the separatists. Oh, separatists. The military. Oh, man. I was told to shun the military. I don't remember who I need to bring in, but we'll do the conservatives next. The old guard from the regime to Salazar and Franco have quite loudly raised their concerns of the potential democratic turn Iberia may be taking. For long, this hard militarists and chief ideologues from the old days are becoming increasingly concerned about Iberia's new direction, seeing it as treacherous and antagonistic to the ideas that they work so hard to implement. It is time to hear them out in order to avoid a major and dramatic rift in our union that could have deadly consequences. Um, I remember there was a comment from yesterday as well, from the last video, that... Maybe we'll go complete, like, market liberals? We'll see what happens. The regional debate, though. Perhaps the most contentious issue in the process is the, pro is the issue of separatism. Basque, Galicians, Catalans, etc. They all made the claims for nationhood and sometimes use violence as a means to achieve their goals. The history of this issue is seemingly everlasting and has become ingrained beneath the very skin of Iberia. Many have died fighting for and against the ideas of the separatists, but a radical opinion or option for paying heed to the separatists is now available. So, too, is the option to shut them out once again. Actually, what's our stability like? Unstable. On the one hand, listening to the separatists and giving them a real special region program would help perhaps allow them for the future of Iberia to remain stable and whole in the end. Terrorism would hopefully eventually cease, and the needs of these people will be placated within a deal we could hopefully reach with them. On the other hand, giving any sort of leniency to their demands may set the dominoes off and foresee to the balkanization of Iberia. Whatever decision we make, we are bound to upset someone. But we must do whatever is best for the future of Iberia, so a disaster does not strike in these world-changing times. Uh... Oh... Mm, I don't know. I don't know. What I remember, though... We probably don't want to invite the conservatives or the military in. Mm. Mm. We are unstable. Spain is one. The regions will be heard. You know what? If I make a mistake, you'll see me do a fade in, fade out anyway. So I'm going to do this. Spain is one just because I do not want former terrorist members in t being represented. So... So be it. Are we still unstable? Are we critically unstable? Or we're still unstable. So be it. The conservatives. The fire and fury of the separatist menace. Of course. So Iberia is one individual internal internal nation. There will be no entertaining of separatist notions that would lead to certain doom. This goes double for the treacherous separatists in Spain who once worked as a heathenish Bolshevik fifth column. We've not forgotten the treachery and, and to placate them now would let them simply bite the hand that feeds them. It's simple. You give these deserters an inch and they'll take a mile. We completely and utterly reject their demands that would have seen Iberia crumple into a failed state. This of course has not gone down too well with the separatists who are sticking their necks out for talking to the government in the first place. Now it seems like we're back to the usual cycle of terror. The more militant and radical elements of the various separatist movements have apparently been proven right by response and more attacks are likely to follow. Let them come, we say, for we have faced them down once before and we'll do so again. The separatists may cry and stomp their feet, but they will not tear apart this great nation. We, with all our might, shall see to it. Yeah, and still unstable. Fine, so be it, whatever. And the people. A key question has emerged while we have gone on with these reforms. Are we to open this process up to the people, or are we to uh, carry this endeavor out behind closed doors? Liberal elements have recommended that the debates be broadcast to the public in order to truly open up the process to the masses. The decision to take in public input would be drastic and no doubt showcase a commitment for democratic reform. On the other hand, do we want the public potentially meddling in matters that they know little about? If we were to allow them a voice, we could give them a clear platform to voice their opinions. Or we could just simply play them lip service and pay no heed to their ideas. Oh boy, conservatives now. Those who are defined as conservatives in our political establishment have rally, rather loudly raised their concerns towards the speed of the reforms that have grasped Iberian political society. Writing to the Cadillas personally, head honchos from the old guards clearly stated and concisely their anxiety towards what is currently taking place in the nation, believing that the breakneck reform, reformation will allow for the scourge of liberalism and even worse communism to once again flow in Iberia. The old guard conservatives have written a rather impassioned plea that also states, 
The change that is occurring on all fronts threatens not only the political existence of our regime, but also the very future of Iberia. We write as a collective to give you our genuine advice that this process may very well destroy everything we have worked so hard to build. This process could lead to a ca catastrophic turn of events that would tear Iberia apart from the inside. Please do not let this, ha let this happen. Assuring the letter, it may have been. We still hold the real power in Iberia and can choose to dismiss the concerns of these vestiges if need be. Or we could also pay heed to their opinions and give them a promise to listen further in advice. Mm. Oh, these decisions. We're still reformist. Okay, so here's the deal. We have five in total here. I've gotten rid of the Separatists. We went with the Technocrats. I'm pretty sure I'm going to allow the people to see stuff. So I want three out of five uh, to be in support of us. So we don't mind conservatives being here, but I really don't want the armed forces. Probably. Probably. So we're going to share their concerns for now because we have to say no to the military. And hopefully this will still be relatively unstable stable and we're still reformists so hopefully this are all the right decisions to make i don't know a little of approval though nice the figures that make up the old guards have seemingly rejoiced at a response and we will listen closely to their concerns and we'll take them on board once again writing to ourselves we have wrote, written up a pleasant and congratulatory letter that praises our decision a jubilant letter the co-signed by the major old guard figures the conservatives have stated to our humble caduillos we give our most grateful thanks that you have decided to pay attention to your oldest and most thankful supporters it is extremely pleasing to hear that you will take your concerns about the future of Iberia seriously and we will see to it that the fifth column and the agents of chaos won't bring ruin to the nation through this process you can count on us and to help in any way we can to see it to that this great calamity does not occur we shall be grateful and give you our support and you can rest easy that no further complaints will arise should the current situa situation be kept evidently it appears that the conservative support of the government has increased we may need to count on these men should trouble arise further down the line all right so if that's the case does it actually go down no it does not which is good that's very very good we're still out of manpower though which is not very good but we have the people and we'll do the military next so, one of the most important aspects of the Iberian political society is that, of course, the, the military. With important connections to the regime via Generalissimo Franco and their direct role in the civil war, the military make up a crucial part of the ruling regime. With this in mind, influential members of the military have w wished to have a prominent role within the current process. Of course, it is likely that they wish to shape the discourse to make sure the military's power remains absolute, yet they also make up an integral part of our movement. Their ambivalence of the civilian government is well known, but attention must be given to these men. They are very much a powerful force whose needs will be need to be placated, or there could be untold consequences. Well, we're still unstable. Broadcasting the debate, though, a question has remained ever-present throughout this whole process. It teeters on every meeting and talk that has been so far been held. Precisely, what is democracy and what should it entail? Well, certain liberal adherents believe it entails one key feature, the people and their input. In order to envision a truly democratic reformation process, it has been recommended that the final debates should be broadcast to the whole public to show transparency and a genuine commitment to democracy. All in Iberia, be they rich or poor, Spanish or Portuguese, conservative or liberal, will be able to watch the most important debates and no doubt voice their opinion towards the results. This huge spectacle could have drastic ramifications. While may show the government has faith in its people and shows an attempt at making connection with them, it could also cost us dearly. Should the debates go smoothly, we have a little to worry about, but if they end in a disaster, then God knows what the consequences will be from the public. Instability is already too high, and this just might push a beer over the edge. We can keep the debates behind closed doors as a precaution, but this may also give off signs that are true feelings towards this process. We're going to broadcast them. I've already made up mine. Just, yeah, we're going to broadcast them. And the military. Ooh, they're probably, they're not going to like my response to them. I already know there's. What I'm going to tell. So, Iberians eagerly wait for the final debates. For the first time, what it seemed like centuries, posters and leaflets were seen throughout Iberia that was not just prolonged just propaganda or pro regime material. It was a call out, a mass marketing campaign unlike anything seen in Iberia before. Walls, lampposts, and shops all had them on display. It was a message to the whole of Iberia that perhaps the most important event in its history was about to take place. People were first whispered about it, something somewhat in disbelief, and then they began to shout about it. For the Iberian Congress was about to broadcast its final debates to the entire nation for all the public to see. To those born in Cadillo's Iberia, the proposal seemed foreign and yet alien, yet exciting. A new development that would give a leashed public give a leashed public a legal voice in the proceedings of the nation. To those much older who had seen a society much different than that of a beer today, there's a cynicism that some couldn't help but be optimistic. Maybe just maybe this could be real, the real deal. The outcome could be a hopeful one, the one that help stop Iberia's decimation. After all, it appears that to be partly in the hands of the people now, does it not? Estamos listos. Cool. Very cool. Well, we'll see what happens. The military. And then we'll do the final debate. Now the time has finally come. All have gathered from across the whole of Iberia to discuss the very future of the Union. Technocrats, conservatives, separatists, militaries, and liberals are all miraculously under one roof. It will doubtlessly be a hard-fought endeavor to keep the, the peace between these opposing sides with opportunity here is to truly transform, transform Iberia. The results of which could set Iberia on a path of renewal and reward in these dark times. Many are hesitant and many more are extremely nervous at the point potential power shifts that these debates may cause. Indeed, no one truly knows what the ramifications may be of this whole endeavor. However, it is certain that the future of Iberia will be shaped by what occurs in the coming weeks. The consequences of this great debate will be felt for many generations to come. The debate is to begin, and with it, Iberia's political landscape will be decisively decided upon. And we shall finish this episode with the armed forces role.
in the situation in Iberia today is far removed from the past, and these testing towns have been clearly influential or influenced Iberian political society. For example, it has become a common belief within certain sections of the Iberian government that the nation is better or is under an existential threat from forces of terrorism. It has been alleged that Bolsheviks and separatists have ran rampant in the recent past, beseeching our great nation with the horrors of urban warfare. Thus, there has been a clear worry about the current process will not only stop the terrorist threat, but also increase it as instability grows in the nation. It is through this worry that the military's most staunch supporters have stepped into the limelight. The military very clearly wants to have a voice in the current ongoing debates. They, of course, claim they only wish to do so in order to save off the threats of instability and terrorism. The more cynical among us, however, deeming that they only wish to do so in order to keep power or keep hold of their power and stop any sort of reform to the armed forces. Their intentions clearly seem to be wholly political rather than mere love for the country. Iberia, of course, is having a clear history of military involvement in political affairs. This occasion seems no different, but we could put a stop to the meddling in an obvious showcase of our commitment to reform. That being said, capitulation to the armed forces may be necessary in order to stop any separatist th threat or leftist plot. Rain the men. They must keep order. We're going to rain the men. This might be a bad idea, but we're going to rain the men. Hey, better carriers. Cool. And sub... Ooh. Oh, no, not the sub-3. 1960s nuclear carrier reactor. I'm just kind of waiting right now for an event to pop up that the military is disappointed in us. And the antagonistic army. The decision is so blatantly to tell the army and its political backers that they are not needed or wanted in the political process has went about as well as could be expected with the military and its supporters. In sense that such a snob could, snub could occur, the army has expressed its deep disappointment that such a decision was taken. But so far, they've all they that that all has been that that they can do. They have been clearly stopped where they thought they could succeed. The yes men of previous administrations have evidently made them arrogant towards us. Now they believe that told no, like an opulent child, they crowd against a rational choice. They will not need to reconfigure this, but it gives us more than enough time to figure out how we will truly sap the power of need be through this process. However, this decision has also irked the military's conservative backers who have likewise expressed a definite voice of a lack of confidence in ourselves in the process. It's plain to see they don't have what it takes to stop a beer from falling on in on itself, so latch onto a past that no longer exists, but this matters little. The process should go on with no insidious meddling from the armed forces. The armor shall know its place in this new Iberia. Great! But that's going to conclude today's episode just because I think tomorrow might be the last one. This might be the final end of Iberia, but we'll wait until tomorrow to see. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, can Consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we shall make our final decisions for Iberia. Maybe. Thanks for watching, though, and have a great rest of your day.